Okay. Alrighty. Michael? I'm here. Okay. Did we get it on your end? Yeah, it looks good for me. I don't think his mic is picking him up I when he talks. I think that also. All right, hang on just a sec. Yeah, because I keep seeing, Michael, your your thing keeps going green, and then there's nothing that comes out of the computer. There How we about go. now? Whoa, there we go. Okay, so I do have to leave the, the gain sensitivity turned on. Okay. So That's we'll fine. uh we'll just see what it does. We'll make do. Uh does it did it affect your audacity level? Yeah, it kicked my audacity level up a little bit, so I'll just have to watch it, make sure it doesn't climb too high. Okay. Okay. I've been watching mine in audacity and it has not moved, so Okay. Okay, so I'll just keep an eye on it. Whoop. Alright, it's time. It's time for episode 118, 118, 118, Unsant Dees Wheat. What? That's a, that we did it in French. Who's Wheats? Dees Wheat? Dees Wheats. Claim, yeah, give me Dees Wheats, right? Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. I get it. Well, I have two yeah. bricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the sheep and the wheat, right? The last few times I've played it has definitely been all about some sheep for a lot of people. Oh, man. I've built roads out yeah, of sheep. The sheep are the most useless resource in the base game. Yeah. I think if you add in... Well, we've talked about this before, but cities. Cities really make sheep valuable. Well, more valuable. Yeah. The cities adds a bunch of stuff, and I think it's generally all good, but, you know, tastes vary, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, uh, second episode in a row, attempting to fight the demons of audio again, but this time because we did it to ourselves. Back foul recording demon. (laughs) We have freed ourselves from the shackles. I think that, that while we have left Microsoft behind, the world out there is a place where Maybe we need a war rig to get through it for a few a few attempts. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully this episode comes together at all and you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to do Discord. We, we've heard it's better. I like... I don't currently sound like a robot, I don't think. Nope. Uh, you do not sound like a man attempting to give me a ransom note. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a problem in the past. Not that viewer... Uh, viewers? Viewers? Uh, listeners would have ever heard it, but, uh, I will attempt to, we've had some episodes where Andy sounds like he's ready to jump in the back of a moving van and (laughs) fight for the Joker. (laughs) If you got any of that, uh, email us at podcast that we were gamers.com and your name will get read on the podcast because you're awesome. Okay, back on track. This is We Were Gamers. Hello. There's JJ. There's Michael. Hey, guys. All right. Well, hopefully we can leave the audio behind us. We'll keep getting better at this, which is a sad thing to say, 118 episodes in. We're just figuring it out, guys. Gentlemen, it's um, it's become that time when I can feel old age. Aren't you younger than both Is of your us? back hurting you? Yes, however, <laughs> random pains have now started in my body, and I don't know whence they came. Ah. hmm When did we get it so old? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I uh, bruised my foot somewhere, somehow. That's not great. And uh, no, it's not easy to walk around on, so that's fun. But uh, I hope everybody had a nice weekend. I don't know... What y'all got up to? What you played? What do we want to hit today? There's been a lot of news lately. And also, I think maybe some games. A lot of news, though. We did news last week, and boy, do we get punished for it. But I think we should do it again, <laughs> because <laughs> we are gluttons oh, for actually, it. Actually, <laughs> before we get into news real quick, uh, 
Okay. Uh, we did some movies at the end of the podcast last week. I have like a quick movie question. Uh, did either of Ooh. you all see that Mission Impossible? I have not seen a Mission Impossible since the one where they all yelled fulcrum at the same time. I don't even know which one that is. I don't remember which one that was. Yeah. Uh, but I have not seen the new one yet. I can say that that new one is pretty good if it's a bit long. Maybe didn't need to be as long as it is, uh, but that is a good action movie. Okay, that's good to know. It's definitely on the list. Yeah, they have a really awesome car chase in there, which I liked a lot. Uh, and you know, just some good, like, practical effects, like, real stunt stuff. What kind of a car chase person are you? Because One I'm that I a can Ronin. Okay. Uh, my examples of a good car chase are Bullet, Ronin, Drive... Uh, and Mad Max, if you count it. Sure. Mad Max, the whole movie, I guess, technically okay. is a car chase. Yeah. And I mean, there's like every movie is a car chase, so I don't know how yeah. you count those, but like in movies that are not, a not solely about being in a car, I think that like in order, I would probably put Ronin drive bullet. Maybe only because Bullet is older and you can see the pipes shooting the cars up into the air. <laughs> it's true, though. Uh, it's, yeah, it is uh, true. So I don't know that this is as good as something in, like in Ronin uh, or. But, but what's your style? Is that is that your style or is it a different so style? I don't mind the car chase if there's like, you know. You know, modern movies, typically, the, the thing that I hate about most modern action movies is that they're cut in such a way that the action feels very, like, frantic. And so they're quick cutting back and forth between a bunch of different things. And it's really hard to kind of see exactly what everyone is doing all the time. Uh, you know, like, they're cutting back and forth between shots of the two cars, and then one car goes off a cliff and explodes. Well, like, but how did it get to that cliff? What direction was it driving? You didn't really see my indication of a car chase that I don't particularly find to be good. Some are enjoyable that fit this bill, right? right? Uh, but some that are, are, but they're definitely not good is when uh, every shot that you switch into the car, the person is shifting. <laughs> the Fast and Furious style of car chase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which so I mean, there's some enjoyable chases in Fast and Furious because oh, they're pretty undoubtedly, uh, and a lot of those were done. But with when real they cars. cut in the car every time and Dom is yeah. shifting, you know something's wrong. Or like when they flip a car around at sixty and throw it in reverse, and the transmission doesn't fall out the bottom. Sure. Well, some of that is a realism thing, and some of that is like a cool movie look thing. Uh, at least a decent amount of the cars in the Fast and Furious movies were made with real cars. Um, so there's at least that aspect to it. Obviously they stunt sure. them up and you know, whatever, cause that's how movies are made. Sure. Sure. Uh, obviously they did some of that in this movie as well. Cause like cars don't just flip over or, you know, explode. But, uh, I would say that in general, I prefer the, I don't want to call it slower, but the, the more, uh, the longer takes the more obvious, uh, like overall aerial shot of the cars chasing each other or whatever. Cool. Uh, and this has like a really awesome one of those in it. So I highly recommend people watch that movie. If you are, like action movies and don't mind really Tom Cruise, uh, doing Tom Cruise stuff. <laughs> I know he's a big fast and furious guy, but, uh, JJ is, true. but I don't know, uh, Michael, where you land on the car chases in movies thing. I, I'm a fan of them too. The, the quick cuts is definitely what gets to me in terms of it is cut to car, cut to face, cut to close up, cut to gear shift. And, you know, in rapid succession where you just, you feel like your head's going to spin off. So you do not like gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> it's a little much. Man, I uh, wish I knew what his answer was. <laughs> Seriously, with this? <laughs> like, how close to this thing do I need to get? I don't know that it's a closeness thing. I don't know what's going on um, with that. Yeah. JJ? I feel thoughts? like it's not picking up your... Did you leave the input, determine input sensitivity on 
automatic. Determine so if you're in the setting, so if you're in the voice and video settings, yeah. whenever you're talking, mm -hmm. that bar should light up green. The input mm. sensitivity one? I can move it down a little bit and see if that helps. I would just turn it back to automatic and then leave it alone. We might get, like, more than we want, but that's better than getting less than we want. All I have for input sensitivity is a slider. Yeah, but it says automatically determine input sensitivity? Correct. There's, like, a little button right above it. Under voice and video in the app settings? Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. And can you I click have on voice automatic? I have voice activity and push and to talk. Is What do you have it on? Voice activity. Okay, and underneath that, input sensitivity should be the next thing next down? Y yep, and it's a slider. No, there's a button that says automatically determine? Nope. What? I don't have the button. Uh, okay. Uh, slide, the, <laughs> slide the slider all the way to the top? Uh, put the slider all the way to the top. All the way to the top? How's that? Anything? Maybe. Am I coming through? Or perhaps what we meant was all the way to the bottom. How about now? Whichever Am I way. coming through now? Yeah, you're coming through now. Whichever way okay. that we can hear you, put it all the way that way. Okay, we'll try it. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. as a test, just a one-word answer. Michael, uh, have you or have you not sat... In the back of an F-16 fighter jet. Sadly not. Wow, that's two words, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it required more than one. Uh, <laughs> it validates my chest. How many of the Mission Impossible movies have you seen? Five. Okay, well, he's pinged on now all the time. Yes. I can see his microphone is on right now. Okay, we're going to take that slider and move it just slightly, like a teens up. Back the other yeah. direction. Okay, how's oh. that? One, oh, oh, now it shut off. Okay, we're in the right zone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think I we're think in the we right zone that. because this goes on and off now, so let's leave it alone. Okay. We can play with that more afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, we'll play with it. I am appalled that he does not that have that button. Maybe, that is weird. Maybe we need to update Discord. I don't know. Mind Force updated me when I started it, so. I don't know. I would, I, Michael, did you just download it this time, or have you had it? Um, Mine is running, so it might be because mine is running in the browser. Oh. Ooh. Okay, yep, that's we what We have it a is. culprit, apparently. Monsieur Rainey. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get you to download the app later, but... Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back on track here. I'm sure I'm going to leave a lot of that in, because ah, well, it's probably pretty funny. <laughs> please do. I I am apparently the culprit. I am sorry, dear listeners. Yeah, it was me earlier, remember, when I sounded like a robot? Um. All right, well, I okay, can I wait till it comes to video to watch Mission Impossible, or what? Uh, so... Yeah, sure. It does continue a little bit from the last one, but honestly, oh, you don't no. really need... Okay. It's fine. Well, Just don't watch it. Just go in. It's good. Speaking of secret agents, uh, Idris Elba, are we excited? I am. Oh, I'm very excited for this. Yeah, dude. Please. Let's go. Let's give me a James Bond. I have interest. I don't... I'm nothing personal against Daniel Craig. I think he probably was a good Bond. I saw one of those movies. But Wait, after I saw it, I was just like, okay, he's kind of like a flat bond you only it wasn't like a debonair bond or like a mischievous bond or anything you only saw one yeah mm. i like craig he was fine okay it's i'd liked him too i'm done with him though i've seen enough craig let's do something else idris elba is gonna be something else based on have you guys seen that luther series no but i've heard a little bit about it Ooh, doggy is good the only thing i know about luther is apparently it's named after a hamburger <laughs> I know where you found that out. 
<laughs> Episode 117. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you have any interest in finding out what a Luther is, uh, go back to uh, episode 117 of We Were Gamers, and it'll answer your question. And be a great episode where you can laugh at all the news we gave you and then was promptly wrong. So before we uh, before we move off of movies and car chases and action stars, I I came across a headline that was good enough that I saved it to read to you guys. Ooh, so I'm going to need you to just take a second and take this in. I love doing the blank headline thing. We should just do this every episode. One of us should pick a pick a headline that neither of none of us know anything about because it's fun. Okay. Anyway, I'm usually the one doing it, so it's fun for me. You get to be on the receiving end this time. Yeah. All right. Suicide Squad 2 delays allow Will Smith to film Bright 2, Bad Boys 3 next. What? <laughs> that's that's a lot of silence. I, so so we're getting Suicide Squad and Bright and another and why, Bad Boys. And why? Okay. Well, like what was that third one? Bad Boys 3. Oh, I missed that part of it. Okay. I like Bad Boys 2, and they don't need to make a Bad Boys 3, but I'll watch it. Yeah. Of those three movies, if someone were to tell me it, I had to pick one that I wanted, it's I think it would be Bad Boys 3. It's virtually no choice at all, because the other two sound so awful. <laughs> Well, I don't know what the plot would be of a second suicide. I know what the plot of a Bright 2 is going to be if Will Smith is, is in it, right? Because right. he's always the star. He doesn't play like a back role, um, which is what would be interesting about a Bright 2, is if the legend of his character is kind of in the background of new characters. Or they like do some other stuff in that world. Yeah. So if Will Smith, unfortunately, because of Will Smith being a megastar, he has to be the star and... That means Bright 2 is going to have a struggle to get ahead of its own plot. Then you're talking Suicide Squad. What do they have to do if they're going to bring back... I mean, who are they going to... You'd have to know who they're bringing back and what they plan to do. Because is Joker and Harley going to be in it? Because then I'm like real out. I mean, there's a... I think even if you put Joker and Harley in it, which by the way, Harley and Joker, I think are the two most popular people from that movie. Oof, sure. So I don't want a Suicide Squad 2. I'd watch a Suicide Squad 2 if it was a Deadshot movie. Hmm. Okay. I'm more into that than whatever it will actually be. Right. So that me leaves the Bad Boys 3 as the safest choice. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh run run away yeah the other nice direction. that was a good that's a good blank one i did not know i did not know those things yeah all all three of those were news to me when i saw it God. all right well before we get into a news roundup does anyone uh have any gaming updates because i just have just been sprinkling some magic in like uh salt bay you know mm-hmm. that's a good, and, that's a good uh, way to play magic Sure. I like the magic quest system, uh, basically because it's still in beta. There's not a ton that you feel like you're missing out on if you don't play a thousand games a day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't have enough cards to worry about getting up past bronze, and there's no real rewards in it anyway. And uh, I played a quick singleton, and I got two wins, and I didn't feel bad about losing all that gold. And... Um, yeah, and then, you know, the quests are like, re-roll and then play on all white deck, and you get all your quests done. Mm -hmm. Just by playing, like, two games, because you just play a bunch of cards. Yeah. And that's a good way to play. I like that. So, that's it. That's all. I'm done. Unless you guys saw that magic video that I posted, but, man. Uh, I'd People should watch that. Go to our Twitter. Yeah. And click on that link. It's wonderful. It's something. And you get to see, you get to see some famous people in there, like the creator of Pandemic. A whole bunch of other stuff. It's the guy playing with the unsleeved lotus hurt me in the soul. <laughs> yeah. Knowing how much that card is worth now. It probably hurts that guy's soul because he's like, oh, this could buy me a car. <laughs> yeah. 
if only, right? Yeah, I mean, I think if you have a mint one these days, it's probably worth about that much. I I wonder, do you, I don't think we should get too far into this, but do you know how they authenticate those even at this point? No, I have no clue. Somebody's got to be able to authenticate them before you spend that much money on them, right? There are enough people yeah, out there. There's got to be some way. Yeah. There are enough people out there who know what a, a genuine old school alpha magic card looks like, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, right. in terms of gaming stuff, I really didn't do a ton. I played uh, some Hearthstone. I've been really enjoying the uh, most recent Hearthstone expansion, actually. Uh, they added a legendary who, when you put him into your deck, uh, at the start of the game, you will randomly be given one of the deck recipes, and that's just the deck you play as. You don't have any other choices you randomly get an entire deck recipe to play with. At the Is start it a of the set game. list? So one of like five? So the deck recipes are those things that like Blizzard provides three of for each class. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, and you, this guy's name is Whizbang. Uh, he has some, I forget what it is. Whizbang the Wonderful or something like that. You put him in, the picture of the deck changes to that guy's face. You start your game, you just get a random deck and you play as that class. And, uh, it's, it's good. Cause then you just, you, you have like one, it gives you all the cards, even if you don't own them. Uh, and you just, you just go. And then afterwards it goes, Hey, you just played this recipe. If you want to make it go to the deck tab and blah, blah, blah. But obviously you don't do that. <laughs> that has been a fun way to do that. But mostly I've just been playing a bunch of dead cells and man, that game is good. I've been moving along with Yakuza zero also, but dead cells man what's grabbed you so hard about dead cells the combat is just so good there's like a million different weapon types every time it's one of the the roguelike light type things where you know every time you die you get a different loadout uh you find different weapons and stuff throughout the uh the levels and each one handles a little differently this sword with a slower swing but more damage or slightly less distance but quicker attack rate and a giant two-handed sword thing or a mace or a 15 different types of bows and grenades and traps and all this stuff. Uh, it's just been really, really fun to play through. Nice. And that was kind of my, uh, my gaming. That was kind of it. Michael, I assume it's been a little bit light for you. You had some uh, family in town, so... Yeah, we had some family in town. My parents were here this weekend. Yeah. Awesome. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so we, uh, what did we do? We took them up to Santa Monica for a day on Saturday. Had a good time. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Um, yeah, actually, you guys, you guys will enjoy this. Um, we made a, we went down to the, the pier and did the boardwalk and, and the stuff that you absolutely have to do when you're in Santa Monica. But over the weekend, there was also a tribute art gallery that had been set up um all devoted to art inspired by Miyazaki. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that and so it was happy. it was just Saturday and Sunday um and it was this small little um I'm going to blank on the name of it now, but it's this small little set of a bunch of galleries all put together in kind of an industrial setting. So they were um, sort of sh shoved shoulder to shoulder inside these old, uh, almost factory spaces. And so one of them had just opened up and they had hung art artwork on all the walls inspired by all of his movies. Sweet. Oh, man. Yeah, it was very cool. That sounds so, really fun. Yeah, Maybe, we um, came home with a... Uh, and then all the, all the prints that they had were for sale oh, in, right. you know... However, many of a run the artist had made. So we came home with a cat bus print. Yeah. Ooh. Little Totoro action. Nice. Yeah. So that'll nice. be going up uh, uh, somewhere. All right. Cool, man. All right. We should get into this news. There's a lot of it. And thanks to recurring audio issues, we're going to always run short. Um, well, you should start with roguelikes. Let's slay the spire through some news out. Yes. Hey, guys, what is the 
theme of every video game announcement that's come out in the last, say, year. Hey, Nintendo makes a console we want to put games on. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't X game be good on Switch? Uh, well, it turns out that it would uh, if you make a game that uh, Andrew and I both know, uh, and Slay the Spire, is coming to Switch. I would play that on a on a Switch, I think. I, it might be hard. I don't know. Is that Switch have a touch screen? Do we ever figure this out? It does have a touch screen. Do you think that that game would work as a touch screen game on a Switch? Probably not. Uh, I mean, it would. It would work. Uh, okay. I assume they will have some way for you to do it without the touch screen because what if you have it docked, right? Oh, good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't think that one through. Um. But I would guess that it, it seems like it should be really easy for them to already support that. So I wouldn't see why they wouldn't do it. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think they're really pushing, thankfully, a lot of the indie games to come out. I wonder if they're helping these guys with some dinero or what. Yeah, I, I will not claim to know the business of video game making. But hey, <laughs> I, that game is good. People should play that game. Absolutely. I'd be excited. Uh, Switch theme continues. Diablo from Blizzard also coming to the Switch. It's cool that it's coming, but it's like such an old game at this point, and I'm not convinced that it's not going to be outdated as of this BlizzCon. Well, D3 plus Reaper of Souls and all the expansion stuff and the Necromancer and all that rolled up together in, I forget what they're calling it, some kind of... Eternal Collection. There we go. Um, Yeah, but... You can also look at it from a foot in the door perspective, right? Good point. Yeah. And sure. I mean, and hey, technically, if they port Diablo 3, doesn't that mean they're technically porting Diablo 1 every, like, what is it, January or something when that event comes around? I don't know if the console versions get seasons or um, non standard content. Oh, hmm, that would be a bummer. Hopefully they do, because those events are half the reason the game is cool. Sure. I think that I saw that you have to pay to do the online service for that game, though, mm. to get it to connect. Right. Nintendo's online um, stuff. But there are some positives to it. I, I also heard that if you have a whole squad of necromancers with all their skeletons, the game still will not dip below 50 FPS. That's pretty impressive. Um, okay. You can lag regular PCs if you get enough stuff on screen. Right. I regularly did it with D3. Yep. Um, and I don't know that it's a bad thing, even if it is outdated technically. It's a Switch D4 is not coming anytime soon. And it's kind of almost at this point with having been on PS4s and Xboxes so long. I mean, it's like the new version of Gauntlet basically, right? It's... It's having that game you could pop on with four people and and just play. Yeah. I I think it's smart. I mean, you know, the game at this point is probably more of a Blizzard wants to make console versions of their games because it's an audience of people that, you know, play games and Blizzard makes games. Why not sell it to more people, right? Uh, so this is probably them getting their foot in the door on the Switch. And, uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to see Overwatch switch next, but I wouldn't say it's out of the question. And neither did Blizzard. They they said that they would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a question. Right now with the switch, I feel like Overwatch would just be a question of do they want to take on Splatoon or Smash later this year? Probably yeah, not. And, like, would people play? Would there be enough of a community playing Overwatch on Switch to make it, you know, keep going yeah yeah that's cool and uh psa for people that might be looking at switches with a little bit of the news this is not all of it i mean obviously we didn't even talk about smash coming smash ultimate which looks insane we did talk about it a while ago i think but luigi's dead y'all uh, luigi's Rip. dead <laughs> that's true although nintendo seems to not think so uh they definitely killed him in that video yes uh, the Switch is getting some bundles. Walmart got a bundle. Best Buy got a bundle. If you want to wait for another retailer because you don't like those retailers, I'm sure there will be other ones getting bundles soon. Seems like one every week at this point. So, uh, I've been holding out. 
Yeah. They're starting to, maybe they're needing to pick up pace or just incentivize people that are on the fence like me. Or maybe they finally have like a deep enough group of people who bought the thing piecemeal that they're like, all right, we could get like, you know, they'll goose it for this holiday. Be like, hey, we're going to finally, here's a real bundle with some sweet games and. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Um, All that, though, is a little bit muted when we hear the news coming out of Amazon. They're redoing a lot of their Prime benefits for both Amazon Gamers and Amazon uh, Twitch. Man. Cutting me deep. I don't... I don't get it. Uh, Is it too popular? Are they losing too much money because it's too popular? And if so, why did they create a system that was too too deep of a discount? I'm curious. Um, I guess we should say what the news was. Amazon Prime pre-orders uh, used to be 20% off, which was an amazing deal, especially on Nintendo games, which never go on sale basically until they sell out. And then if it's popular, it's worth more. And if it wasn't popular, it's worth less. So good luck. <laughs> it was 20% off physical copies of games. Right. Correct. And um, Twitch, you got ad-free viewing, which is what's going away there. Yes. Uh, so, man. Ouch. Some of the best benefits. Yeah. I really start to question why I still have an Amazon Prime membership these days. Um, you know, they're bringing shows out that I watch occasionally. But man, you know, the the two-day shipping is something, but it still never gets here in two days. And so Really? It pr- Yours does pretty oh, rarely. Whoa. I would if I were you, I would note every single shipment in the last month or six months or whatever that has not shown up in two days and I would get on customer service right now. Cause A, they'll comp you a bunch of prime membership time for it not being there like that and maybe get on the people because I get mine in two days no matter what every time, even on Sundays. Okay. The ones that have been out of stock and stuff, like, I don't blame them on, but definitely some of the stuff has not shown up in time. So, I mean, go check that back out. But, man, you know, like, the, the video game incentive stuff was, like, a pretty awesome perk. Uh, Best Buy did away with their version of that incentive thing recently. So, I guess Amazon's yeah. like, well, haha, we don't have to give this perk anymore. Um, Yeah, it sucks. It's, it's a bummer all around. The ad-free Twitch stuff was really great. Um, that's going to make watching that site a lot less awesome. Yeah, I got to bring that ad blocker back on. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Uh, not something they want to hear, I'm sure. No. Um, it's odd to see benefits removed from a program rather than added. And, and across the gaming space, everybody that has kind of had incentive programs or rewards programs and all that sort of stuff they've all kind of fallen away nintendo's rewards program got revamped to be lower i think sony's rewards program is gone uh xbox i believe revamped theirs to basically be nothing Uh, i'm unsure why they're feeling the squeeze so hard on this stuff but it seems to be the message they're sending is that the the, maybe they're too squeezed on prices yeah, I mean, there is a, uh, the price of things inflates and the price of a video game has not gone up in a pretty darn long time if you look at the historics. So, yeah, you know, that $60 price point has, uh, yeah. Uh, and if anything, there's downward pressure on the price of those games with digital costs and stuff, you know, games releasing at 40 and 30 and 20 all the time. Do you think that uh, the digital squeeze is maybe where they're feeling it because people are actually buying digital games now? Because I don't see why you would. If you there's a physical copy of something, why? Unless you're a speedrunner and you need it to load as fast as possible, why? Why wouldn't you buy a physical thing? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think the convenience of the digital stuff, especially on the PC side, is is pretty obvious, but. Absolutely. For a console, um, yeah, I don't really see any purpose in buying digital ones if they're the PC same price. PC storage is basically free. 
in a lot of cases, the physical copies go on sale where the digital copies on consoles don't. So, or, yeah. well, they do sometimes, but it's infrequent. Man. Well, there's also, you know, no used market for digital. All right. Well, let's get into the third act where we're not as depressed uh, from that little sad downturn with Amazon. There's the biggest news of the day, I think, was NVIDIA. NVIDIA dropped. Yeah. So the long awaited next generation of NVIDIA cards has been unveiled. They are called the GeForce RTX series, uh, and they unveiled three, I think. There's the RTX 1080 Ti, the RTX 10, or, sorry, I called it a 1080. That's not what it is. It's the RTX 2080 Ti, Ooh. RTX 2080, <laughs> and RTX 2070. Um, NVIDIA not being the uh, most inventive with its numbers and naming, I guess. Yeah. We went from GTX to RTX, and the numbers, they added, a, they increased the one in front, I guess. Different architecture? I don't know. They have some sort yeah. of naming convention for all this stuff. What is sad about it is, like, that naming convention's great on the inside, where you can keep every single chipset straight, but who cares on the outside, right? The, I guess the numbers yeah. help you find out in ascending order which cards are better than which other cards. But Right. I'm sure that's what marketing is doing for them. Um, but, you know, it's... It looks like this uses this uses GDDR6 instead of the GDDR5 style memory that was on the 10 series cards. Um, you know, they have a different GPU architecture, maybe faster memory speed, higher clocks or whatever, but um the thing they're pushing with this one is ray tracing, Andrew. Do you know what that is? Or Michael? The I've phrase really sounds from the phrase sounds vaguely familiar, but I probably couldn't tell you what it is. No. So there's kind of been a holy grail of sorts for uh, graphics programming for a while. And I guess, you know, this is, I've read articles. I'm not like, I don't work in this field. I know computer stuff, but I don't know this stuff that well. Um, ray tracing is the stuff that they use in movies and in CG animation that gets rendered out over time and looks really good. Uh, it's inordinately, insanely expensive in terms of processing because it's essentially like what happens in real life. They simulate every point of light and all the lights that it emits and it hits a surface, then it refracts and bounces because that's what, how light works, right? And then what that light, the cast light from the reflection does and all that stuff, it creates a real, much more realistic type of lighting and stuff. But the problem is all that computation is really, really expensive to do on the fly. NVIDIA seems to be claiming here that these cards are built more to handle this on the fly ray tracing stuff. And is ray tracing um, kind of a necessity for VR? No, no, not at all. There, I mean, there's VR stuff now. Yeah, um, I know there's VR stuff now, but it seems to have maybe topped out on the realism front. Um, and I'm wondering you know, if ray tracing is the, the goal, holy grail of realism or what? Uh, I mean, sure. Just in terms of like making things look more real, uh, it will be a, a huge factor. The problem is, of course, you know, the more real you want to make everything look, the more computation and the more power you need. So the, this stuff has been possible to do for companies, you know, like DreamWorks and Pixar and these companies where you have giant farms of servers to render out your movie over the course of a week or a couple of days or whatever, however long it takes to render a copy of Toy Story, I have no idea. Um, but it was never possible to do real time while you're playing your, you know, your shooter game that you want to run at 60 FPS on your screen, right? Or more these days sometimes. Yeah, and they're, they're claiming hmm. you can do all this and maintain faster speeds than before? Or they're at least claiming that it's now way better than it used to be such that maybe it's possible to start. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's interesting. And, you know, nothing works without developers supporting it, so who knows what we'll actually see there. But the thing that I'm most excited about, honestly, is that maybe this means they'll lower the price of the 10 series oh cards. Gosh, I yeah, know, right? <laughs> there you go. And then I can get one of those, because that's, that's what I'm looking for. 1080 Ti would be nice. I don't yeah, know if they'd uh, even... Oh, so they did show the prices of these three cards. Who wants to take some guesses at how much they are? Oh, gosh. 
Okay, so uh, they're within a range, right? Yes. So the the 2080 Ti being the highest and the 27 RTX 2070 being the lowest. I'm going to take the TI and say that it's $3000. Okay, it's less than that. Oh man. It's quite a bit less than that. Oh, that really? It's probably yeah. Uh 1200. That num- Yes, it is 1200. Nailed it. Oh wow. I would have uh, definitely gone higher. First first try. Uh that is a significant premium over the 1080 Ti. Sure, uh, the 1080 Ti sits at about uh 850, maybe 900. Yeah, I was going to say it's like 8 or 9. Now that crypto days. has crashed a little bit. Yep. Uh the 2080 is $800 and the 2070 is 600. And they call these the founder editions, which are like Nvidia ways of saying like hey, these are the better versions or whatever and then they will release the regular versions of these cards, which are maybe down spec very slightly and cost like, you know, 60 or a hundred dollars less in, you know, a year or something. Huh? Um, yeah. Like the, the founders edition compared with the base edition has like a faster clock speed and, you know, some stuff like that. Not, not like more memory or like faster memory, just like a overclocked, clock from the factory essentially um huh. which is okay but you know you're paying a premium there uh i'm sure companies like you know asus evga uh and you know all the usual gigabyte companies are going to come out and make their own versions of these cards which will generally be cheaper than these founders editions so right um that's a lot though uh and i would love it if that meant that the 1070 and the 1080 came down to like you know if the 1080 was under was 400 and under and the 1070 was like 300 ish 250 ish that would be probably a range that I'd be into um you know we'll see what they do i don't know wow well i'm hoping graphics prices in general are coming down we'll see yeah you know and like hey at this, you know, I'm I'm running Yakuza Zero on my PC at like 240 frames a second on my 970. So yeah, why hey. why do we worry about it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Well, if people have uh, other uses for the 10, ooh, not the 10, the 2080 series that we didn't get to, uh, that we should tell people about, where should they send those? Uh, well, they could they could email right. us at ooh. wewergamers.com. Michael. Michael on the on the step two. I like it. Um, they could look us up on Facebook, on Instagram, and on the Twitters at We Were Gamers on all of those platforms. They could find us wherever they consume their fine podcasts. Um, they can give us some five star reviews on Apple or on Google Play. Or they Beautiful. could come back next week. Yeah, we'll be back. We can keep trying this thing. But in the meantime, what do we think of the Discord desktop app? All right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I I don't have an opinion yet. (laughs) 